so wow this will be an intro sequence reaction i feel like a star anyway i apologize maybe i will be a little bit buggy here at the beginning but it will get better at least i life in our small village on the coast of greenland had been quiet and peaceful ever since our return of course that memorable day in may when fate once again put me to the test Okay, so this intro sequence, it is surprisingly pretty good for such a such an old game. However, it is basically only 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 epic sequence in the entire in the entire series. Other ones are just boring. Yeah, even this girl, like I mean, this face and this girl running, it looks. It looks super creepy, like, I'm sorry, but it just looks creepy, like, like this echoing laugh, it's like from a horror movie, but it probably, it's probably supposed to be, like, you will see what comes next. Yeah, and here we are in some battle with a giant snake. Uh, just a clarification, it will be, exp it will be explained later on, but this is his vision. This is Bjarni's vision, and yeah, now he woke up for a moment, but here it comes again. And yeah, and okay, this guy is uh, Sigurd, on in Polish Zygismund, I think. Yeah, and this guy, Hechi, like, for entire sequ uh, sequence, he's just, he's literally just flexing, just looking, and he doesn't do anything in the entire sequence. This is just funny. Okay, yeah, and... This one is quite epic. Mm. I never really understood what is this thing. What was that thing behind Sig Sigurd? Was it some animal or was it the snake? The Ragnarok? Okay, our, our heroes. Our hero suddenly woke up. Oh yeah, Kira looks good as well. <laughs> she just, just looking. Yeah, I mean, it is it is kind of blurry. I cannot really figure out is it if it's supposed to be. Yeah, and the gates of Asgard are closed. Ooh. Yeah. No, notice how the snake still has the arrow in the eye. Yeah, if if I had such a vision, I would really be creeped out. Yeah, this looks, do, dog looks funny. <laughs> yeah, and it suddenly seems to be already evening. Yeah, according to the map, also there should be a trees between them and the village, but whatever. Yeah, the village was supposedly on the peninsula. That was the intro sequence. So, hello everyone, this is Jan's Mix, and I decided to do a kind of let's play of this uh, real time strategy game, Cultures 2. Uh, why did I. Why did I decide, decide for that? Basically, mainly because I think this series is uh, quite, underrate, quite underrated. It is one of those strategies, uh, real time strategies from. Uh, early z early zeros. This one is from 2000, 2002. Uh, I mean, those games, those real time strategy, were fairly popular in uh, Central European countries. I'm from Czech Republic, but this one particularly uh, has a fan base until now in uh, Germany and Poland. However, uh, I don't really speak fluently in either. In either of them, like I can understand some basic Polish and German, but uh, no way I am fluent in them, like in uh, G in German or or, or Polish. And uh, basically, I didn't even notice there will be an English let's play of the, of this game. So I decided uh, I decided to do, uh, to do that because I thought it uh, it will be interesting. And basically, my relation to this game is that. Uh, I really enjoyed playing the, uh, this one when I uh, when I was uh, ten, 
and uh, several times I returned to, uh, to this game uh, until now and now actually it was like two or three two or three years or I think even more definitely uh, since our played the campaign uh, and like basically the entire uh, campaign I didn't play in really really long time so I thought it would be interest interesting to uh, to record myself playing this uh, after uh, such a, uh, such a long time of course I I remember most of the things uh, which are gonna happen in uh, in different missions but I thought it, it's gonna be interesting because some, some things I may not remember so clearly and some things are gonna uh, some things are gonna uh, su uh, surprise me and in this game there is I believe uh, 10 campaign missions and one of the, uh, eight free ones and yeah there is some multiplayer training which are well not that interesting if you uh, if you ask me but can be challenging uh, challenging as well uh, however I think with 10 campaign missions and eight free ones I think I can play always like one campaign one uh, one free one to go through all of them because the free ones are also quite interesting so let's go let's begin with the campaign the Greenland life was quiet and peaceful in the small sleepy village on the coast of Greenland until that memorable day so yeah let's go let's what go could it have been? the terrible images were still chasing each other around in my mind yeah now he's talking about a vision intensity that left no room to hope that it may have been just a daydream rather than a horrible vision with a deeper meaning to it the dreadful enemy i faced aided by three strange and oddly clothed heroes at my <laughs> side had the appearance of a gigantic snake there could be no doubt that it was evil Even judging my appearance still makes me shiver but why had the gods sent me such a sign? Did they expect me, me, to face this monster? This battle would require heroic deeds, like those described in the ballads old men tell to frighten little children as they sit around the campfire. And who could the three unknown heroes have been who stood by me to face the hellish fiend? They were like figures from an ancient saga. One question led to another. I decided to ask our village druid for advice. Maybe he would be able to help me find the answers. That's a very wise decision, Bjarni. Anyway, yeah. To explain the story and the game a little, uh, we play we play as a Viking Viking Bjarni. This game also, of course, takes place in the in the early Middle Ages. There's our village. Yeah, the uh, the intro message was the only was the only one. Uh, was the only one uh, which was actually read. The rest of them I will I will read. So when I reached our village, the circle of my friends and family, everyday life greeted me with a calming peace. All thoughts of evil and horror seemed absurd when viewed in this light. Yet I knew what I had seen and hastily sought our druid. My cousin Forkbeard has uh, had seen him leave the village northwards towards the hut where he gathered his herbs. I followed at once, hoping to find an answer to all my questions. Search for the druid along the northern road. Yeah, along the northern road. <laughs> I, I have to say that this game taught me when north, south, west and east is. Yeah, anyway, this is information and it will be pretty simple. Yeah, by the way, I am supposedly in Greenland and yeah, this is definitely like far too far too green for an actual real Greenland. Maybe it's summer like yeah, there is there are sno some snowy areas. So maybe during summer it would be kind of accurate. Okay. The village druid as I stood in front of our druid and told him of my vision. His face was serious and concerned. Bjarni, what you have said worries me. The gates you saw can only have been the great gates of Asgard, the fortress of our gods. It appears that our downfall approaches. Ragnarok. 
the end of the world is night, just as the ancients predicted. My wisdom is insufficient to you, to help you, but I will give you some advice. Prepare a ship and take your bravest men to the isle of Norland. There is in a, there in a ring of stone in the deepest crater, you will encounter the Norns, the goddesses who weave the treat of fate. The dread of fate. Uh, they hold the answers to all your questions. Go to the shipbuilder on the eastern shore and purchase a ship. Follow me back to the village and take the path towards the east. Follow the yellow signposts. So yeah, yeah, there you have it. And I can already control my village, so I will, <laughs> I will make some children. Cause they will come in handy later. But I, I got quite a sufficient number of civilians. Yeah, so basically finding the aforementioned norms will be the goal of this uh, of this mission. And for this I will uh, I will need a ship. So yeah, this yellow guy, this yellow village is a ship builder. And uh, basically I will need to buy a ship from him. That is basically the goal of this mission. Uh, the ship builder, we need a good strong ship to reach the isle of Norland. Our ship builder Hoirio in Vikingthorpe was famous for building the best ships around. All we had to do was collect uh, the tribe he demanded for his work. Pay the shipbuilder 10 mead to build a boat for you. When the druid heard that the shipbuilder was demanding mead for his work, he aided me with both words and deeds, knowing that I was an inexperienced leader. Yeah, uh, it's not easy to brew meat, he said. That's true. Uh, a number of steps must be taken to build a brewery, I will help you. First of all, turn uh, a few of your idle men into builders. So yeah, this will be basically pretty much uh, explaining the basic mechanics of the game. Well done, the druid praised me. Now tell your builders to construct a farm. Build a farm. Yes. So yeah, this will this will take a little while. And wait, I can I can't have carriers so far. So yeah. So this mission has some restrictions. Actually, normally I would be able to build a ship myself by leveling up my carpenter. Although it will be it will be probably longer than uh, than start making making the meat. But this uh, this mission has some restrictions because it is kind of tutorial mission, so I can I can build only the uh, only the buildings I need. But otherwise, I could already be building uh, building those uh, dwellings and defense towers and warehouses. And yeah, now I will need a farmer. Excellent. Now make one of your Vikings a farmer. When he is experienced enough, you can build a mill. Watch your farmer as he becomes more experienced. Assign one of your people to the farm as a farmer. It's already done, my boys. Yeah, I've got quite plenty of civilians. I don't think I need to need to get more. Anyway, this game basically made me a, a little interested in uh, in history. Uh, wait, notes? They're giving me notes. The druid used the time you spent waiting for the farmer to offer some advice. Your worker have very essential needs. They need to eat, sleep, and be entertained. Also, a man who produces armor and weapons requires the god's blessing and must pray regularly. Of course, all this will keep them from working, so you should make sure their these needs are fulfilled. Your workers will be able to recover much better if they live in a nice house close to their workplace. 
Uh, no, not really. But anyway, uh, then if they have to sleep outdoors on the hard ground, if there is a woman in the house, she will cook tasty meals for all the inhabitants. This fills their bellies better than simple nourishment. Also, her pleasant presence will keep them entertained. One uh, other thing, long walks exhaust your people. Try to make sure workplaces that do a lot of business uh, with one another are close together. Yeah, that's a good advice. Uh, provide your people with shoes so they can walk faster and better and give them roads. Yeah, uh, like what's important from this is that they have needs, they have, yeah, they have health, health and they have energy and stamina. Energy is basically uh, basically hunger and what I especially need to be careful about is their energy. In other words, give them give them food because otherwise then they die and basically hunger is hunger is the biggest enemy in the, uh, in this game. Especially when I need to uh, when I need to get food for the soldiers. Luckily, we have coastline here so we got fishers so all of this is food which uh, which they can take and yeah building the roads can uh, can make their transport faster however mostly I'm not doing that neither I am giving the shoes because uh, eventually the shoes get wore out, wore out and it's pain to make uh, the new ones all the time. Your farmer is now experienced enough, the druid called. Your builders can now construct a mill. Build it close to a farm where you can produce wheat to make flour. Build a mill. Okay, I'm on it. I'm on it. Can I make carriers? Wait. No, I still can't make carriers. Mm, that's a shame because carriers uh, speed things up a lot. Yeah. Anyway, to my uh, to my ten years old old self, this game gave a pretty good basic concept of how things in the village work and also about the history however I must say like it is not the best idea to uh, to take this game as 100% historically accurate I mean if you're on the on the elementary it kinda gives a good co a good concept I mean in this game there are missions in Europe like Normandy, England, Italy even uh, even the Arabia, and that's all true. Like Vikings uh, really have stormed uh, basically the most of the Europe. However, in this game, we are we are basically on a mission to save the world. <laughs> Spoiler alert! Uh, the mill rose proudly from the ground. The druid congratulated us. Your farmer is the only one experienced enough in work at working with wheat. Turn the farmer into a miller and watch him become experienced in this professional. Then let someone else work as a farmer to maintain wheat production. Yeah, so basically this is how production of everything works in this game. Can I make carriers already? No. Hmm? No, so we will have to, have to wait. I can maybe kill the time by... Uh, by walking around to see no yeah finally you can assign carriers or merchants to some workplaces the druid suggested to why we are waiting for the miller they can save your other workers a lot of trouble enabling them to concentrate entirely on the production of their goods it is also useful to assign carriers to warehouses and headquarters so yeah that's true that's true, and that's what I was waiting for, because carriers speed things up a lot, because normally the miller has to, you see him, uh, he has to go to the farm and pick the wheat from the, uh, from the miller, and then mill it inside. 
but the carrier is doing that for him and so and so the miller just needs to stay inside the mill and be and be milling and this will speed up a process a lot this is a thing i wasn't really doing when i was a child but later on i experienced that this just tactics will really speed things up a lot like really a lot this is why i was waiting for the carriers so much and see he is he's almost done he's almost done otherwise i will be waiting see the future baker will need water to take his bread Build a well close to the place when you want your bakery to be constructed. There is a little room in front of your main house. It will look good and you will save some space for the larger buildings. Build a well. Uh, I would actually rather build a well or something, I don't know, something around here. Yeah, and bakery will be around here probably. Mm, not the best choice, but still sufficient. Uh, anyway, what was I talking about? <laughs> Yeah, basically the carriers are good. Yeah, because as a child I wasn't using carriers that much, but later on I discovered that using them speed everything up a lot. Next, build the bakery house close to the mill and the well. The druid instructed by producing food with your farm, milk, and uh, mill and bakery, you will later be able to keep a holy supply with food for some time. Build a bakery. Hmm. Seems I am also already playing this game for almost twenty minutes. Time flies fast, apparently. To be honest, I hope it will be faster, but whatever. Yeah, let's assign another carrier and let's assign farmer here already. Yeah, and while the building is in progress, the carrier will also carry the necessary necessary goods to the building. So it will also speed up the process for the builders. Uh, when the bakery had been completed, we looked forward to trying the good fresh bread. But first, someone would have to begin working there. <laughs> the only one experienced enough to do that do this was the miller. I turned him into a baker, but since the mill was now empty, our farmer had to become the new miller, while one of the civilians became a farmer. Uh, turn your miller into a baker. Assign a new miller to the mill, assign a new farmer to the farm, if it is empty. Yes, probably the most time here I lose by reading all those messages. The druid examined our growing village appreciatively. Congratulations, your people will now have to go hungry for now. Will not have to go hungry for now. Well, I have the fishes, but whatever. By the way, only one, only an experienced baker can become a brewer. Now you will need honey to brew meat. Build a beehive close to the largest building site. Build a beehive. Well, I can do it already. Mm, normally, I couldn't because I would need to wait for the baker to get experience, but whatever. Oh, and yeah, now we see the music changed. Yeah, because apparently I am doing good, so the music changed. Basically, there are like three levels according to what? According to this? Yeah, according to the happiness. And happiness basically, it is basically meaningless. It just uh, sets the music according how high the happiness is. There is. It depends on how. How much food do I have and how much do I fight, etc. Like, if I get a lot of food, then uh, then the get happiness goes higher. And if I fight a lot and my uh, my people lose health, it will uh, it will it is gonna drop. While the bees buzzed around the hive, we set about uh, building a brewery. I build a brewery close to the beehive and the well. Said the druid. 
build a brewery. Yeah. Yeah, so basically there are three levels of happiness. The normal one when I'm starting, then the danger uh, and the wealthy. And now I got to the wealthy one. But probably I suspect it is because of some specific scripting of this mission because I believe normally it wouldn't happen so early. Yeah, let's get them some carriers so it will be faster. By the way, this statistics cable is quite useful. How many people I have? 25. Yeah, it's quite good. Yeah, probably I will need to wait for this construction uh, until the game lets me to have a brewer. All we need now is a brewer to produce the meat. Your baker can do this as soon as he experiences enough. Turn your baker into a brewer and assign a new baker to the bakery. Assign a new miller and farmer to ensure food production. Tune the baker into a brewer. Then make sure you have people working in your bakery, mill and farm. You did it! <laughs> the druid praised us. Uh, now watch a brewer production producing his meat. Click on the brewery. Once you have 10 meat, you can pay the tribute the shipbuilder is demanding. Then your journey to the Norns can begin. Pay the tribute to the shipbuilder as soon as you have sufficient meat. Yeah. And how much meat do I meet? Ten. Yeah, this will be this will be done right away. I can already send Bjarni in there. By the way, heroes there are four heroes, the ones we saw in the uh, in the in the intro sequence and those heroes don't have any hunger or stamina <laughs> so that is quite comfortable yeah we already got six pieces of meat the druid said now you have produced sufficient meat to pay your tribute pay your tribute do, to do this open the diplomacy window and select the shipbuilder then click on the demand tri tribute to pay it yeah Done? Done! <laughs> the ship was ready, waiting for the uh, by the wayside. I still hope that my voyage would be brief, unaware of the adventure that lay ahead. However, the druid had warned me. So I thought it uh, it wise to take some brave men and women along with me. Send Bjarni onto, onto the ship and set sail for a south. Take your brave men and women along as company on its long voyage. Uh, that's not true, I I in fact don't need anyone. Having just Bjarne is fine. Wait. There is some person? Okay, and some food. Well, anyway, I don't need to care about that at all. Now I only need to find the island, which will be uh, somewhere north, I mean south from here, and that will be the end of the mission. We love the family of waters. I thought back to our adventures in the new world. Back then well, we had set our full of hope unaware of the dangers ahead. But now all that lay ahead was a short journey south. I would meet the Norns and my problems would be solved. Fast and without difficulty. <laughs> or would they? I push these disturbing thoughts from my mind and glance hopefully towards the future. Uh, no, Bjarni, your problems won't, uh, won't exactly will be solved that easily. <laughs> yeah, it will be simple to reach the, uh, the island because it is quite a big one. Far south in the realm of the icy giants lay the Isle of Norland. 
if we wanted to prevail on this arduous journey, we would have to find a way through the dangerous eyes that barred our way. Find the Isle of the Norns. Yes, yeah, so this will be pretty simple. I already remember how the Island of the Norns looks like. And it's definitely not this one. Yeah, this is the one. <laughs> this is the one. Uh, devastated, dead trees, fire only, some fog, yeah. The sinister island with its flaming volcanoes appear to be Norland, the Isle of the Norns. Land of the northern shore and go to the center of the, the island. Yeah, so this is apparently supposedly a mythical place. Okay, hello Norns. And... Wait, did it, did it bug? Oh jeez. Jeez. Don't tell me that there are some technical problems. <laughs> As we stepped into ah, yes. the sunny circle of the crater, a terrifying silence fell. The three sisters, Bert, Verdandi, and Schult, stood there looking as though they had been expecting us. My companion stayed back, and I faced the Norns alone. I was later told that not a sound could be heard, but I heard their voices, loud and clearly. They spoke in a whisper. What you saw, Hero Bjarni, was what lies in the future. Jormungandr, the Midgard Serpent, has arisen ahead of time. Ragnarok, the god's final battle, has not yet begun. The gates of Asgard have been closed, for the mighty gods are not yet ready for the fight ahead. If you... Born of human blood, do not stop it. The serpent will smother all of Midgard, the world of mortals, with its pestilential breath. Seek your fate in the lands of the south, and waste no time. Find there the three heroes you have glimpsed. They are pure of heart, and will stand by you. Seek out the path to Vigrid Wall, where your fates will be sealed. The Norns handed us five mysterious ancient chests made of wood advising us not to open them until we trod on fertile land. <laughs> there you have it, mission completed. Now every time I complete a mission uh, I can actually I can actually continue if I just want to build a gigantic village. Uh, so yeah and every time I finish the mission the entire the entire map uncovers. So yeah. So now, now I see this. This map was actually was actually rig, uh, rectangular. Mostly they are squared. Yeah. So yeah, I I said uh, I said I could go exploring. However, there was not really anything anything to explore. There are not even wolves in this uh, in this mission. Yeah, just my village, the shipbuilder, and and that's it. Yeah, and there is there are a few other islands. Wow, what is this? <laughs> Some ruins, interesting. Yeah, but I believe there is certainly nothing like interesting or usable to be uh, to be found. So I believe now we can uh, now we can end this mission and we should be able yeah we can now play the the other one the Normandy yeah it took me it took me like almost half hour to finish this mission and I believe next time we can play the Antiochia and then continue continue in the campaign. So yeah. By the way, historically Vikings, uh, yeah, Vikings were assaulting pretty much entire Europe. They are originally from here, the Scandinav Scandinavia, and Greenland was one of their colonies, let's say. And they actually, uh, they actually went so far to sail to today's, uh, today's Northern America.
However, yeah, I will take a look. Uh, I will take a look into other parts of the Europe, even the Arabia, uh, in the future missions. So yeah, next time we will be playing Antiochia, and I am looking forward for that. So take uh, take care and have a good day.